Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, of course, Cuck has had the last couple of hours to play two matches and warm up. Um, 1E, I'm sure, have been warming up and practicing as well. I know they're a team that's very good at doing that, so it'll be interesting to see uh, what type of form each team comes into this match with. Is Cuck tired from playing so many matches, or are they the type of team that is better when they play a bunch of matches in a row? We'll, we'll find out. We'll see if they got any of that Cuck magic left. Yep. <laughs> 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 that cock magic we love to watch. <laughs> ah, it's the good stuff. It's the good stuff. All right. So it seems like Anton is attacking, so we should be live. Look at that. Even some some decent sportsmanship getting involved. Not <laughs> not the typical cuck way. P Pie Jacker says, GG, we lose. <laughs> and Kalenka <laughs> starting out pretty strong, taking off some picks. It can't be in Zed getting picks as well. Straight off the bat. So y'all were asking about the whole picker strategy. You can see how it can't be in Zed are doing that exact thing. Uh, they're on one side and not picking, and the rest of the team is rotated all the way over to the other side. So Interesting that's the to see there. it can't be in Zed taking that role. Traditionally on this team, Emperor has been one of the primary pickers, but maybe him taking a back foot on that now that they've recruited two of the best pickers in North America right now. Interesting to see. Emperor leading the charge right now. Yeah, Emperor may be moving into a more aggressive role than he used to play, which would be interesting to see. I think it might suit him more, actually, as a player, to play more aggressively and have more room in the team. Because it used to be he was kind of had to be the hard carry for his team, and I think you give him more space, and I think he might be able to perform better. We just we just saw a full wipe from 1E e there, taking over the trench all at once. Uh, it doesn't seem that uh, any of, of Zed's crew uh, even died in that, in that push. Yeah, we're looking at a 1E e that's coming in in the best form we've seen them in a very long time. Having They came in third in the... Uh, in, in the and the uh, VCL only losing to Air, who now have disbanded, uh, and also losing to PC. Obviously, PC a very strong team. Um, they they they've been playing together this group of people for a while now, and then adding it can't be and Zed really just strengthens this lineup. Filtrated Bread, a player that played with them for a long time, uh, just as a friend, he was never on their team, but now that he's on their team, he definitely knows knows a lot of these players and knows how they play. This is going to be a team that I think has some really good chemistry. Um, and yeah, Cuck just getting... Wow. Cuck having trouble getting out of their spawn right now. That was something else. Yeah, Cuck are a good team, but 1E e just on another level. We were hoping this would be a close match, but as, as, I, as I worried a little bit, this 1E this e team, they came to play. Yeah. Cucks are getting cucked right in the cuck. <laughs> one E is not going to stop until they're in the finals, and, and, and they're not going to even stop then. I think they want to win this tournament. Emperor has been a, a strong player in this scene for a very long time, never won himself a title. I think he's going to really be wanting that title right about now. And we can really see it. They've really put the work in. They've been scrimming over the last couple of weeks with various teams. They've been practicing a lot, uh, and, and that work they put in is really showing here. Just absolutely insane. Emperor 13 kills, Zed 6 and 0. It can't be with 4 kills. Vetrix with 5. So I guess uh, give us an idea of, of, of exactly what uh, 1E is doing that Cuck just cannot. Uh, at the moment, um, well, what, first is, off, is it just is it just a, that big of a skill gap, or is it? Uh, is... I mean, it really is. Let's just put it this way: any of these players on on one e could could be pickers in cut. Like cut, it's just that next level skill. You take your best players and you make them pickers on any, no matter what team you're on. And it's just that every single player on one e is as good as cut cut's pickers. Like that's the problem. Like it's a depth thing. Obviously, players like Kalinkadink, players like uh, Who Am I Blowing in the Black Hand, these are good players. It's just the depth on that team isn't there. And when you have a team as deep as 1E, it's just very difficult to defeat them when you have less depth in your skill. 
Uh, I saw also one just... he is playing. Um, I think that was a. Uh, yeah, I think that was a uh, cuck party that was called on the one he left side. And then they immediately moved out of the trench before the RD even hit. I don't think anyone actually died to it. Well, that's another thing you're going to see from 1E. I, I, I was really excited when Filtrated Bread was added to this team because one thing that 1E has always lacked is sort of these skilled, like, strategic-minded players, and Filtrated Bread is really that type of player. Uh, he's not, like, a, a really high-level strategy player, or he hasn't proved himself as that yet because he's never really been on a team where he was allowed to lead. Um, uh, but I think he's really going to add a lot of value to this team maybe not necessarily in the fragging department but definitely in the, the sort of strategy department as a leader so i think that's helping them a lot that sort of movement that we just saw getting away from that artillery is not something we might have necessarily seen from them in the past but making big improvements with their, both their roster and their training regimen i think uh it's going to help them in, in places like that i mean it's just that i mean one is a team that practices multiple times a week they scrim multiple times a week like they're just probably playing the game more than a team like Cuck is. And they're putting the work in and they've been playing longer. I mean, most of the players on this team have been playing this game for three plus years. It's just, or, or they're just extremely talented. Players like Zed and MJ are young players who've only been around for about a year, but they've been playing the game a lot in that amount of time. And they're extremely talented. I just think it goes to show how big of a depth change there has been in this team, because if any of you in the stream watch the VCL, you'll notice MJ. MJ was the standout player for 1E in this uh, VCL season. And, and, and that was a very different 1E team. They were a lot had a lot less depth. Now look at the depth they have. MJ is the bottom fragger on this team. We're talking about a player who was one of the stars of this team in their previous form. And now That's not to it, say MJ's gotten bad. This team no, is just MJ, actually... Yeah. No, MJ is still an excellent player. It's just that the amount of depth on this team is just ridiculous. Uh, yeah, everything. <clears throat> everyone else has accelerated behind him. Uh, this, I, I gotta say, guys, I, 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 I was not expecting this. Good guy. <laughs> uh, the, uh, it, yeah, it, it reminds me of, of the jump, like, from, uh, college football to professional football or something. It's like, no, that's really what the, it is. The discussion always comes up, you know, would it, like, it, because there's always a great college football team in the middle of the year, um, and they say, would this amazing college football team be able to beat up on this bad NFL team? <clears throat> and the, the fact is, is that that NFL team has, uh, 50 plus NFL quality players. Um, while a college team does not. Uh, a college team has a handful of those guys, kind of like you're saying with the pickers on the cucks, uh, they just they just have that skill across the board. Yeah, exactly. No, I mean, yeah. That's, I mean, I think we're probably going to see something similar like this in our PC versus uh, SMW match. Um, the real epicness of tomorrow is going to be that 1E versus PC match. That's going to be with with 1E in a form like this like we've never seen them before. PC is obviously a very good team as well and they've won a, players on that team have a lot of accolades. Um, this is probably the, the closest we've the, a team, this team is the most likely team to dethrone that PC team. This 1E team as you're seeing right now is very very good. Uh, are we going to see an early finish here at uh, at two zero? I mean, yeah, I, I'd be surprised if Cuck is going to be able to come back and capture anything at this point. Not only do, are they just lacking in skill and the difference in teamwork. I mean, they've killed quite a few of One E right now, but you can tell there's just a fear in them. Even when most <laughs> of One E is dead, they're not even pushing up. They're afraid. They're afraid of even those two players who are left alive. Yeah, wow. Yeah, the organization from 1E just seems uh, top-notch. Um, while no, no. Uh, the the uh, the Cuck team, uh, I mean, one of, the, one of these players is still just trying to figure out who he's blowing. It's honestly, seriously, <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing to watch him pick at the players from such a distance and just one-shot him. It's 
It's amazing, yeah. Oh, the precision. Yeah. yeah, the precision is Emperor and Chirpy have been added, like, there's no tomorrow. Yeah, these players really are just excellent at that long range. This is why I, I thought that Cuck might be able to give 1E a, a, a bit of a challenge, but when I saw that the map was going to be Iron, that was just a huge mistake from Cuck. They lost this map in the map ban. They, there's no way they can challenge the pickers of 1E on a long range map like this. It's just, it's just not going to happen. And the other thing is, 1E have such good communication that you'll notice that if one of them dies to someone, immediately someone else is killing them. Even if they're across the map, their communication is, is very good. They know where the enemy team is at all times. Uh, they're just doing a very good job this, this entire way. So wow, you think, I never uh, thought I'd see it. Pie like, Jacker is running away. Is, could, <laughs> could Zab be scared? I don't know, we'll have to see. Honestly, uh, knowing him, he's probably not. <laughs> uh, yeah. For for those of us uh, those of us unfamiliar, uh, Zab uh, would appear to be now some someone step in and, and correct me, Zab seems to be the best player in the world. Yeah. Yes? Yes. Uh, there have been times where there may have been people who've challenged him, people like people like Rebel, people like uh, I don't know. Rebels probably the only one I can think of that's ever really challenged him as the, for the best player in the world. Can you think of anyone else? Shadow Step gave him a bit of a run for the money. Yeah, Rebel and Shadow Step, perhaps. But Zab's always in the argument. You know, the argument yeah. changes. There may be someone else that people might consider, but Zab is always there. And most of the time, he's the. You know. Most of the time, everyone will say, "Oh yeah, Zab's the best." Like it's that's just like Zab is, in my opinion, the best player in the world. But there's no way you don't have him in your top two right now. I mean, I don't. Even, I can't even think of anyone who challenges him right now. That's active in the scene. I just can't think of anyone. Um, now that's not. I, obviously, this is a team game, and even though Zab is the best player in the world, the real question is: Is One E better than PC? That's going to be the question. Um, and I guess we'll have to find out. The only way we're going to find out is when these two teams clash, and it is going to be an epic clash. Indeed. Uh, I know. Uh, I know you mentioned uh, that that Zed uh, seemed to have some kind of personal falling out with Zab. Uh, uh, was was it a a lovers quarrel? <laughs> Perhaps. Um, <laughs> it's complicated. <laughs> There was, there it, was a while did it have anything to do with It's Cox. complicated, and I think both sides agree that it was really blown out of proportion. So yeah, but uh, were they the teammates? Thing. They were teammates. Z Zed was on PC. There were moments where Zed was called the mini Zab. Um, uh, he was. <laughs> if if, if you're going, that. if you're going to make a contestant for Zab being the best player in the world, Zed is probably the player that would come in after that, to be honest. Yeah. Zed maybe doesn't have as much discipline as Zab, doesn't play as much, doesn't have the practice ethic that Zab had, and I think that's where a lot of their disagreements kind of arose. Um, but they're both brilliant players, and there's no debating map. Um, like let's take a look. Lieben got I mean, some players on Cuck aren't doing bad. Look at Kalinkadink. Somehow managing to be positive despite the absolute mm. thrashing his team is receiving. Who am I blowing? Not too far behind him. And, uh, and Pijacker's run and gun strategy seems to be just completely neutralized by, uh, by the precision from, from 1E. Well, like I said, that sort of communication, that long-range uh, ability can really shut down a player like that. He's not being able to get into the situations where he's successful, so he's not having any success. But again, it's just a depth problem. There are good players on Cuck. There's just not as many good players on Cuck as there is on one -E. I also don't think Cuck has played nearly as long as one he has. Like, 
when he has players going in and out, don't get me wrong, the roster does change, but they still have the same core players, and they've no, always had players, the same core players from the beginning. Yeah, players like uh, Emperor, Chirpy, Kyle Zephyr, MJ, they've been playing together for quite some time, Vetrix as well. Vetrix, yeah, and, uh, Vetrix and Emperor have been playing together basically since the beginning of this game. Uh, so, so, uh, when we do indeed, uh, uh, if and when we see, uh, that showdown between, uh, Zed, Zab, uh, PC and 1E, uh, wh what can we expect as far as, uh, uh, a pace of gameplay, uh, strategically from each team? How, do, how does that change when you're looking at two teams that are at that high of skill level? Certainly teams will be probably be more cautious in their aggression. We're going to see the beginning of rounds start with people feeling each other out and a lot of picking. Um, once picks are made and a team is given a numbers advantage, that's probably when we'll see pushing. We probably won't see pushing very much when teams are on even numbers. They're going to want to pick off some of the enemy team before they push. Um, the pace is definitely going to be probably slowed down. Um, it really depends on how close it is. I mean, we don't really know for sure what the skill gap between this 1A team and this PC team is. They've never really had a proper match against each other since these two teams formed. They've had some scrims here and there, but neither team had their full lineup for scrims because scrims, you know, it's hard, hard to schedule scrims and sometimes certain players won't be able to make it. So the, the, the trouble comes when we have the best eight players on 1E playing the best eight players on PC what does that look like? We haven't seen that before, and this is going to be the first time we get to see that, and that's that's why we're we're really excited about tomorrow and, and what we're going to find out. Uh, give me a second, guys. I mean, it it really is a question that can only be answered. Like, how will that match look? Is the only way that that question can be answered is by having that match be played.